Ma Luca che da una lì, Filippo, si deve. Questa, but I'm more than one body in a summon. So, you call the police for coming to the floor? Yeah, man, call the police then for me. All right, people, so see it, huh? Call the police like we're telling you to for me. Yes guys, what's up, what's up guys, pleasant, good day, good afternoon, good night, good morning to you wherever you are, What depends on what time of day uh, it is for you there, alright? So, um, you know, I have a few quick updates for you guys, I don't want to make this video too long, so let me try and get through it real quick, alright? So that video that, that you just watched, um, um, for, you, for those of you who know him, um, this dude by the name of L.A. Lewis. Um, I gather he has vowed to, to the family of the missing uh, social media influencer, Donna Lee Donaldson. He has vowed to the family to, to, to find their bodies. So that scene that you, you just saw there, um, he went to, I, I understand that is, um, is in some, somewhere is in Clarendon, Jamaica, Clarendon. For those of you who know Jamaica like that, but anyway, um, you know it. It uh, he found that some or somebody came across the, those bodies, and as as he was saying, and um, they called him for what reason I don't know why they called him of all person, but anyway, um, he he was showing some bodies there, and but you know we can't show those kind of things on YouTube, so that we had to blur it out. So, um, but I've been listening, you know, the, none of the news stations, um, you know, nowhere I haven't, I haven't heard the police say anything about it as to the identity of those bodies, guys. So I don't know, I don't know what, um, you know, what th that is about. So we're still listening out to see, to, to hear, you know, what that is about. So... We'll we'll definitely let you guys know, you know, what what that was about, you know, if we hear anything. But I don't understand why, you know, something like that, somebody finds somebody's and up till now we can't hear anything about it. You know what I mean? So yeah, we definitely have to watch out, listen out for that. So guys, um as you said can see this guy on the screen here. Um if you remember the face, I did a video on on on, on him. Like at least two videos, you know. If you remember, his name is Russian Bar Barnett. Sorry, he was the one that was arrested and charged for killing his cousin Kimisha and her four kids over there in um in Clarendon. I think the area is Cocoa Piece in Clarendon. Um, you know, the four children ages ranging from fifteen to twenty three months. So he has pleaded guilty in court. So if for some reason um, someone here didn't watch the, the um, that video, you know, and I and and you don't know what I'm talking about, you can just go back and watch, you know, watch that video. So Barnett pleaded guilty in, to five counts of murder in the Home Circuit Court. In downtown Kingston on Thursday, July 28th. His sentencing date is to be finalized. So as as I said in the previous video, the prosecution was seeking the death penalty and filed that case in the Supreme Court ahead of his trial. So now we see where he made a caution statement. Um, where he said on the night in question he served a customer in his cousin's shop. And she came in at the same time and dragged the money from him and said not to sell anyone in her shop, in her shop again, right? And that she even splashed some water in his face. So he felt disrespected in front of, you know, she did it in front of her customer, so he felt disrespected. So after, after the customers left, um, he told her, um, I think this happened, you know, on the night of the murder where that was a few days after that incident in the shop 
where he said she splashed some water in his face. So from then, you know, the relationship kind of went downhill. That is, this is according to him. That is the caution statement he was making in court. So, um, on the night of the murder, he said, um, you know, he, he, he heard, she asked him to lock up the premises and he told her she, she, he heard some, like a vehicle was outside. Um, so she looked out and she said she didn't see anything. So he then said she started, um, looking at him and, you know, as if she saw when, saw that he, she, he was preying her. That was his words he used, that he was preying her. She was preying him, preying him, preying her, right? So then she reached for something on the, on a dresser. Um, he didn't, he said he didn't re know sh for sure what it was, if it was a scissors or a knife. I, so, and rushed at him. So he reached for his knife, which he had on him and stabbed her multiple times. Then he, 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 he said the oldest, her oldest daughter started, you know, to throw stuff at him, jumped on him, and she also grabbed something from the dresser and jumped on him and whatever. So he stabbed her multiple times also. The other kids, you know, as I said, which were younger, um, started throwing things from the dresser at, at him. So he stabbed them multiple times also, guys. He said she disrespected him, you know, as I said before, in front of her customers days before the killing. Um, but guys, I know, you know, he made that statement as if to say he was defending himself because she jumped on him. She grabbed something, jump, um, you know, and he, he, he stopped her. You know, this is my opinion as to why he's making this caution statement. But how could that be, how could that be, um, self-defense? You know what I mean? Because he, if you, if you are defending yourself and you're, um, you're stabbing someone, you know, that would have been like maybe one or two stabs and, you know, but he, 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 he stabbed, slaughtered them like, you know, like that. The, so guys, the mother got a total of 48 stabs all over her body. Right, the twenty-three month old had eleven incised wounds, including one to the neck, which the doctor described as a cutthroat in injury. The fifteen year old who is the oldest got nine incised wounds and four stab wounds. The ten year old had twenty two incised wounds along with a cutthroat wound to the neck. The five-year-old received five inside incised wounds and a gaping wound to the upper anterior of the neck as if he was trying to take off her head. But as always, we will be watching and giving updates on this, guys, as to see, you know, um, what they're going to do with, with, with him, you know, the, what the sentence is going to be, all right? So we'll definitely let you guys know. So guys, the next story. Um, again, I did a video on this of three policemen who were accused of killing a man by the name of Philip Wallace. And if you guys remember this, um, for those of you who saw it, um, the policemen, you know, they were they were doing a, 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 a what do you call it, um, a raid so they went to wallace's um bar and they found 200 bags of weed in his bar and again if any of you guys didn't see this video you can go back and watch them all right so um the girlfriend who was who, who, who had gotten gotten away unarmed right uh, identified the cops as the shooters so remember, it was three of them, right? So he, she was able to identify them as the shooters. And um, two of them were arrested and sub subsequently charged for murder. The third cop fled the island the same night to Miami, as it was reported by the, the DSP 
Deputy Commissioner of Police, DCP, Fitz Bailey. And you know, we vowed that they would be they they wouldn't be stopping until they they caught him and they were working with the international partners to to get him back to the island. Right? So um it is reported by the same Fitz Bailey that he had that the third cop returned to the island on Monday the 1st of August after he was advised by his attorney that he would be extradited back to Jamaica so i guess he, he you know he took his lawyer's um he took his lawyer's advice and returned to the island but guys just imagine for a minute though if the if the girlfriend of the deceased man was actually killed because you know they as I stated in the video, they shot up, shot at her, you know, in the inside the shop. But she managed to 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 escape in um, through a back door, right? Some of some of um, some of the reports. Just imagine some of the reports are headlines we would have been would have been seen or heard, right? <laughs> And more and more so by the same cops who were actually working the case, right? Because remember, they were doing they were the, they were doing the raid and they came across the the weed in the shop. So, um, you know, they were the ones on the case. So, just imagine if she had gotten killed, what what the reports would have been, what the headlines would have been, guys. Right? So, we um <laughs> we can only imagine. You know what I mean? We can only imagine. So um on the on the on the second on the second of um of what is it August he would have gotten um I'm sorry guys give me a second um Okay so the, the next thing I'm not able to wrap my head around so maybe maybe some of you guys can enlighten me if you know the answer to this as to why when the cops um want some regular member of the of the public they can put their their names out there and sometimes their pictures you know but most of it um most if not all the time when a police personnel does some of the same or even worse their their identities are, are are withheld you know but but um as it relates to this case i can um, i can understand that and i know he had an id parade to do to 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 face right where he was to be id'd by i guess i i'm thinking the same girlfriend who had gotten away right so which brings which which this which leads me to this point the um viewers um this third cup was to be on 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 an id parade and the witness was a no show for two straight days guys two straight guys days question signs guys question signs so so queen's council peter champagne said he was going to file an application and oh, i should tell you guys peter champagne is his attorney um, so he said he would be filing an application application for the immediate release of the third policeman implicated in the July 16 murder of Tyler and bar owner Philip Wallace. And that happened in Red Hills, St. Red Hills, St. Andrew. Champagne expressed disappointment for the fact that the policeman is given his full cooperation, but is being inconvenienced as he remains in custody. So guys... <laughs> Who wants to guess why this lady has been a no-show two straight days for a case of the murder of her boyfriend? Right? Drop a comment in the comment section and let me know what the um, the things or a thing that comes to mind. Right? My my first thought, guys, are number one, she was either threatened. No, or number two, she was she was disappeared, if you know what I mean. Or she was, or she was paid off, so as not to be, 
number one or number two. Read between the lines, guys. <laughs> you know, but as I was saying earlier, um, just imagine, guys, that this, 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 um, if this girlfriend was wa um, was was actually killed that same night, that same day, you know, we would have been hearing things like um, maybe drug deal gone wrong. Um, you know, robbery, you know, you name it. We would have been hearing stuff like that because the, some of these same police would have been on that ca that same case, you know, as they were the ones that did the arresting. Right, guys? So <laughs> let me know what you guys think. So, guys, I will definitely be watching this one to, to uh, you know, see how it turns out and... I'll definitely be giving you guys update on it. All right. So guys, remember to like the video, share the video, subscribe if you haven't already done so and hit that notification bell. Blessed love guys. Peace.